Hi, it's Lindley Oz. And today we're going to talk about unforgiveness because this is something that really hinders our walk with God and it's something all of us struggle with. Have you ever thought about somebody and when you think of them, you have this association with the name. You get this bad feeling, a negative feeling. Oftentimes, you get that negative feeling because you are inadvertently harboring unforgiveness toward that person. Now, you can harbor unforgiveness towards an ex-husband, an ex-wife, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, a family member, a, your own child, um, a work associate, a, a person in your past, and even yourself. But God tells us that if we want his forgiveness, we have to forgive others. After all, who are we? Have you ever uh, hurt someone? Have you ever lied to someone? Have you ever cheated someone? Have you ever falsely accused someone? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever cursed? Uh, have you ever, I said lying, so that's deceived. Um, just any number of things. Hurt someone's feelings. You know, unless you were born perfect and you remain perfect to this very day and you've never made a mistake, you have no right to harbor unforgiveness towards that person that you're harboring it toward. It could be multiple people. Have you gone to everyone that you've ever offended and said you were sorry to them? Probably not. So does that mean those people should hate your guts to this day because you never said you're sorry? We have to be like Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said we are to forgive. That is his commandment that we are to love and to forgive. So it doesn't matter if that person apologized to us or not. After all, God has forgiven us when we repent, which means we turn away from it. That doesn't mean we aren't going to make mistakes, but we overall turn away from that sin. So we have to forgive other people just as Christ has forgiven us. Now, if it helps you think about it this way, when you forgive others, you're not doing it for them and you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for God because you're trying to please him. So if someone has hurt you, no matter how bad they've hurt you, you're going to forgive them in order to please God. Now, a good way to do that, to release it, is every day, and you cannot go by your feelings. Our feelings are corrupt. They go with our flesh. You're doing it by faith. We are children of God. We walk by faith. We don't, by, we don't walk by what we see or what we feel. Every day you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I forgive Sarah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I forgive Mark. You may have a whole list of people. It might help you to sit down and make a list of names and circle the ones that when you think of their name, you have a bad feeling. And then every day, read that list out loud of those names you circled and say out loud, I release you from accountability in the name of Jesus. Now, we're not making it okay for people to walk all over us, use us, or abuse us. Because God does not expect his people to be abused and walked all over. You're not going to necessarily go be a uh, buddy-buddy with somebody or anything like that. What you're doing is you are releasing them from accountability. Like I said, if you expect God to forgive you, when you truly repent, then you have to forgive others. Let me give you some advice on a good way to make peace with somebody without ruffling their feathers and getting the whole mess rehashed again. We're also to repent to other people. Unforgiveness is a sin. So if you're able to go to that person and you're in a situation where you can call them on the phone or go to them in person, then you need to do this. What you say to them, and this is an excellent way, you're humbling yourself, you're not necessarily saying you did something wrong, and you're making peace, and nine times out of ten, this particular way I'm going to tell you to do this is going to cause them to say, you know what, I'm sorry to, and it'll all be taken care of. What you do is you go to the person, let's use the name Sarah again. Hey Sarah, I just want to tell you that I'm really sorry for my part in anything that's ever caused you to feel hurt or wronged, or whatever it is that you guys got going on between you, that, um, that has ever caused you to feel hurt or wronged. I just want peace between us, and I'm truly sorry. You have peace to me and my 
endeavors to please God is more important than the silliness. And you know, I just, I just want you to forgive me for ever, ever hurting you in anything I've said or done. And I'm sorry. Okay, nine times out of ten, Sarah is going to say, you know what, thank you. I forgive you and I'm sorry too. Most people are going to at least say I'm sorry too. Now you do have your small percentage that don't, but again, it doesn't matter. You're not doing this for uh, Sarah. You're doing it for God. Of course, if you have the love of God in you, you're also going to want to do it for Sarah too because you, know, you don't want to have hatred or angst towards someone. But if you're that darn stubborn that you can't do this thing, you know, because you got a problem with pride, which you need to release that too, and stubbornness, there's a perfect way to do it. And you're making peace. And that's what is most important. Like I just said a little bit ago, if you've been born into this world and you've been a perfect angel all your life and you never sin, and like, you know, if you compare yourself to Jesus Christ, then by all means, you know, you're special. You're special. Sorry about that. That was my email. Um, but I doubt very highly you are because the only one that was ever perfect was Jesus himself. So we're going to have to do this thing. You're going to hinder your walk with God. There's many blessings waiting on you, but God can't bless you with those things because you won't let go of this. And you've got to let go of it. I don't care what someone did to you. It doesn't matter. Once you realize the importance of the spiritual realms and you release this silliness over your flesh because this is a short life compared to eternity. Once you realize that nothing in this life matters except for God and pleasing God, all these other things will not matter to you. They will be easy. So you have to release that. You have to let it go. Again, you're releasing that person or those people from accountability. You're not necessarily going to go be their friend. You're not going to go hang out with them. You're releasing them from that accountability because you want to make the God you serve, which hopefully is the one true God, God Almighty, and not the God of the world, uh, the devil, the father of lies. If you want to please the devil, then keep on going. But if you want to please God, our Heavenly Father, and you want to be right with Him, and you want to be in Him, then you have to do this. You know, that verse says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. If you are not in Christ Jesus, then there is condemnation. You've got to be in him. You've got to truly repent of your sin today, which does not mean you're going to be perfect. It just means that you are turning away from it. You're going to make mistakes as long as you're in a body of flesh, but you have to strive not to make those mistakes and to let the Holy Spirit lead you. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you have to trust God to let him lead you. Now I'm going to read real quick here a um, passage from this devotional book that goes with what we're talking about. It's called The Other Side of Forgiveness. God wants us to be less like us and more like Him. Forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And it says here, have you ever prayed that prayer? Of course you have, hundreds of times. Because it's from the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 12. But have you ever thought about what it means? Does God really forgive us in the same way we forgive others? That's funny because... Oftentimes there are verses we have heard a gazillion times. We've heard them so much we're conditioned to it. We never really thought about what it meant. But then one day all of a sudden we hear the same verse we've heard a gazillion times and it hits us. And we're like, oh my goodness, I've heard this verse a ton of times, never thought about what it meant. Wow. It's one of those wow moments. So we need to stop and take the time to think about these scriptures that we're reading. I think we're all bad about that sometimes. God has forgiven us and he continues to forgive us. He doesn't constantly accuse us and has removed our rebellious acts as far away 
from us as the east is from the west, Psalms 103, 9 and 12. He doesn't keep any records. How unlike us. Yet that's what God wants us to be and like ourselves and more like him. That's true. If you've truly repented for something, he doesn't keep any records. But if you have not repented of it, he cannot forgive you till you turn away from it. He wants to forgive you. He's waiting to forgive you. His forgiveness is unfathomable. But you've got to repent. Again, repentance doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. If you make a mistake, you get right back up and you immediately repent for it. Don't wait. Repent. Turn away from it. Stop. Don't keep doing it. Don't live in sin and disobedience because you're in a dangerous place if you do. As we forgive others, we don't necessarily trigger God's forgiveness for us, but we show him that his forgiveness is real in our lives. Whenever we ask God to forgive us, we should make sure we have forgiven the people who have offended us. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. Matthew 6, 14 says it right there. So again, this is something that each and every one of us struggles with. All of us. We've got, you know, so many people probably on our hot list <laughs> That, like I said, when we think about them, we get all worked up inside. We get a negative feeling and, and all that. And we need to let that go. Again, I know I've already said this to you. But if you've been born perfect and you're still perfect, more power to you. But I have a feeling you're not. If you've ever, ever sinned yourself or hurt someone or done something wrong in your life, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter how good of a person you are. You are born into sin. God has forgiven you if you've repented. God will forgive you today if you repent from your sin that you're involved in. If you stop doing it, he'll give you the strength to keep saying no to it. But you're going to get tempted with that thing. And it's a constant battle. You're going to have to say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to do that thing. As soon as the temptation hits, I think that's the hardest part when it's something you want to do that your flesh wants to do, but you know is wrong. The hardest part is calling on him at that moment because your flesh wants that thing so bad. The moment you repent, turn away from it. He's waiting there to forgive you. You have that readily available to you. So whoever that is today that you're sitting there harboring unforgiveness towards negativity and bad feelings. If you expect to be blessed in your life and in your walk with God, then you need to let it go right now. You're going to have to do it. There's no if, ands, or buts. This very thing could be the very thing that's hindering your walk with God. There's things you've been asking him for and you're not receiving. You're not receiving it because you ask amiss, just like the Bible says. You've got your heart in the wrong place and you're asking God and expecting him to bless you and pour out his love and blessings upon you and he can't do it. You're just not going to receive that thing because you're sitting there harboring unforgiveness towards somebody. And like I said, it does not matter whether that person has apologized to you or not. You are to be a peacemaker. If you call yourself a Christian, the Bible says you are the peacemaker. We are the peacemakers. Making peace doesn't always mean that you're right and they're wrong. That's not making peace. Making peace means that you're willing to be wrong, to make it right. We abide by the spirit of truth. We do not abide and agree with the father of lies. We disagree with the enemy. In order to disagree with the enemy, we have to do what God wants us to do and to release the enemy and get him out of our lives. Say in the name of Jesus, devil, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Not one more second. Am I going to waste my time living in this sin? I refuse to have anything to do with you. You're nothing but a rotten, filthy, growling, roaring, old, toothless lion. And I'm not going to have anything to do with you. The Holy Spirit has given me the power to war with you and to be victorious by the angels and the power of the Holy Spirit that he has rained down on me. Now, I gave you an example a while back of a piece of paper with holes in it. I don't know if you if you didn't see that video. I took a piece of white paper and held it up and poked holes in it. One hole was 
alcoholism. One hole was unforgiveness. One hole was uh, deception. You know, whatever the sins are in your life that you're living in, those are entrances for the enemy to get into your life. So you can sit there and quote scripture all you want and say the Lord is going to do this and that for me. But if you've got those holes, unfortunately, you've got open doors, enemies walking in and you're letting them in your spirit. And you're going to have constant conflict because there's only two places you can be. You can either be serving God or serving the devil. So like I've said in other videos, if you've got one foot in the world and one foot over in the um, kingdom of heaven, unfortunately, you're ultimately serving Satan. You've got to pick up that foot and move it over to the kingdom of heaven. It's either all or nothing. Again, when I say that, I don't mean you're going to be perfect or you're not going to make, make mistakes. I am talking merely about living outside of God's will by something you are doing on a regular basis that goes against God's word. Sugarcoat it all you want. Find excuses to make it okay. God does not change. You can make your sin okay and then find out when it's too late that you just don't, the only one you deceived was yourself. God will never change. So whatever that thing is you're doing, it's never going to be okay with God. You can make it okay, justify it. Like I said, sugarcoat it, pour some honey on that too, and soak in it all you want. So you can get mad at the people telling you that too, including me. I know I get these nasty people that come and they try to play God and they come to my channel and they play God all the time you should do this or that. You're incorrect in this or that. Well, guess what? In case you're listening to me, I don't listen to you. God bless you anyways, but I listen to God and I listen to what the word of God says. And all of you people that are coming to my channel, leaving me messages that the Holy Bible's incorrect and um, God is within us and we're all God within us. You are full of lies. And you need to go repent for that. And you need to pray God shows you the truth because you are deceived. You have given in to end times deception. If you believe that, and I feel sorry for you. You can say nasty things all you want to me. Leave it on my channel. I ain't going to post it. I'm going to trash it because it's silliness. I'm not going to lead other people astray with your falsified comments, your devilish comments. That's what that is. That's the father of lies speaking to you. God's word is true. Don't fall into this end times deception. God's word is 100% correct. The enemy is misleading you and leading you astray. God is not within all of us. Um, God is not what we make him. God is not being a good person and just being loving and floating around on cloud nine all day. That's not God either. God is accepting Jesus Christ, his son, God in the flesh, as your savior Picking up that cross of yours, which is painful because when you pick up your cross, you're giving up sin. It hurts. Jesus didn't, when, when it says pick up the cross and carry it, you know, it, it, some people, including myself in the past, we think it's as simple as just carrying a bag of potatoes on our back on the way home from the store. Imagine what Jesus went through as he carried that cross. It was brutal. It was painful. It was, it was gripping. It was horrible. That's what giving up sin is to us. When we want that thing that we can't have, when we want to watch that worldly program that we should not be putting in our spirit, when we want to lust after somebody, when we want to lie to somebody, when we want to cuss someone out or say a swear word, I, I cuss once in a while, I slip up and say a swear word. I mean, nothing major, the, your littler ones, but yes, once in a blue moon, I get upset and I'll slip and say a swear word. Not that often, but sometimes I do. I immediately have to repent for that. That's not something I live in, but it's one of those things once in a while that I mess up and do. Okay, we have to take all those things we want to do and we have to brutally put them behind us and walk forward with Jesus. Remember, again, pick up your cross and carry it. Painful, not easy, excruciatingly painful. You want those things, but you can't have them. When you gave your life to Jesus, 
You gave up the life of sin. You gave up the life of the world. You cannot do what the world does. You can't look like the world. You can't have any resemblance of the world. So if you're watching those worldly TV shows and you're justifying it, saying, well, it's funny. I deserve it. I work hard. It's only got a couple things in it. Doesn't matter. Hate me for telling you the truth. I have to tell you the truth. I mess up all the time. I make mistakes. So I'm not by any means putting myself above anybody. I make just as many mistakes as you. The only difference is I won't lie and sugarcoat it. That's the only difference here. I'm not saying that I'm without sin or perfect. I'm not coming down on you as one who comes down on somebody who claims to be perfect. The only fault I'm finding in a lot of people is that they're sugarcoating their sin and they're justifying their sin and they're falling into that watered down deception. We cannot do that. Sin is sin is sin is sin. God hates sin. He loves you, but he hates sin. You have to step out of that. Get those holes out of your life that the enemy's getting in to the best of your ability. Follow the Holy Spirit. Believe in him. Trust in him. He'll give you strength to do it. And above all, forgive that person today. Let it go and release it. You're not going to necessarily feel it. It might take a while to really feel it. But do it as a step of faith. Let it go. You're not perfect. You have no right whatsoever. You've been sitting there harboring this thing. And God's looking at you saying, how dare you? How dare you act this way? You're my child. How dare you act like the devil and, and harbor these ill feelings toward this person? Look what you've done. I've forgiven you. You've lied so many times I can't keep track. That's what God's saying to you. So you've got to do it. Time is too short. Jesus is coming very soon. Let it go. It's not worth it. When you weigh things out, what's more important? This life, which is temporal and short, or your eternity? God has given you the free will to choose. Do it today. Don't waste another minute because one more minute and your chance might be gone. Thank you and God bless you.